In this section, section 2.2, uh, we'll talk about the two main concepts. One is intercepts and the other one is symmetry. Uh, in this course, we'll be concerned a lot about graphing functions different functions, uh, not just lines, and how do we quickly sketch functions. There is many techniques available. Probably the best ones that we're going to see is finding intercepts and uh, also considering symmetry, if any. Um, so x-intercepts, just to refresh from your previous classes, if you re remember, um, it's when the graph crosses the x-axis and if you recall the x-axis is actually where y equals 0. So for example it would be point, it could be any x which we can solve for and y would be 0. And y-intercepts is points where x equals to 0. So you would see it as 0 and y. And so you would set one of them 0 and solve for the other one. And let's take a look. For example, here is the first one. Uh, y equals to negative x squared plus 4, how do we find intercepts? And notice how I subdivide x-intercepts, I set y equals to 0, and y-intercept, I set x equals to 0. So let's take a quick look at how it would look like. Notice how you'll see the uh, computations are done slightly different, but if we set y equals to 0, notice how I set it on the left-hand side, equals to negative x squared plus 4. Well, what I decided to do is move the x squared to the left, so you'll see it as x squared equals to 4, and that means x is positive or negative 2. If you recall, we can take the square root, but it is positive and negative. Now, y-intercept is slightly easier with set x equals to 0, so notice how I plugged it in, y equals, we'll still have the negative, 0 squared plus 4, but negative 0 squared is still simply 0, and so we're just left with 4. So here are the values. Then what we want to do is we want to write them as points, which would be useful to us to graph. x-intercept is, for example, uh, we have two of them. 2 comma 0 and negative 2 comma 0 and y-intercept is 0 comma 4. Now he, the concept of symmetry is actually very simple and very visual. Uh, we will have three types of symmetry to be concerned with. Uh, you, uh, the graph can be symmetric with respect to x-axis, y-axis or origin. And functions can have no symmetry, one of the symmetries or usually it's all three of them if it has more than one. It's sort of difficult to have two and not the third one because they are related. Now, how do we know if the graph is symmetric with respect to x-axis, y-axis, or origin? Well, here is the first example. Notice how this graph, sort of the sideways-looking parabola, um, is symmetric with respect to x-axis. If you recall, symmetry basically means it's the mirror image across the axis over which you are symmetric. Uh, so how do we know if it's symmetric about x-axis? Well, notice if there is a point, let's say on one side of the axis, for example, x comma y, then there would be a mirror image point. Uh, notice how this one has the same value of x, but the y would be negative, because now it's below x-axis. So if it has x comma y, then if it's symmetric about x-axis, then it would have a corresponding point x comma negative y. So that would be the example with the x-axis. Now let's take a look at y-axis and origin. So in the y-axis, it's a similar idea. Notice how it's mirror image across the y-axis. If we have a point x, y on the graph, then there would necessarily be point negative x, comma, y. And so that's how we know uh, just by looking at the graph, or sometimes we know that these two points would be on the graph or satisfy the equation. Uh, now the graph is symmetric about origin. Notice how it sort of flips across the origin. It's a little bit tricky to see because it is mirror image flipped. Uh, sometimes you see it's actually both flipped with respect to y-axis and x-axis, so twice. But notice if we have x, y on the graph, then we would actually have both of them negative, negative x and negative y on the graph also. Now they don't have to be in quadrant 1 and 3 necessarily. You can have, for example, in quadrant uh, 2 and 4 the same way. Um, to be symmetric about the origin. How do we test for symmetry? Well, we can either look at the graph or with equations we have to 
check something like for example with the x-axis here's what we can do we can replace y with negative y if you recall um, pardon me if we had xy then we also had um, x negative y on the graph that's why we replace y with negative y and we want to simplify the equation and the idea is if we get the original equation back then there is a symmetry with respect to x-axis same idea with the y-axis but this time we want to replace x with negative x we want to simplify and if we get the original equation back then there is symmetry with respect to y-axis and if we don't then there isn't a symmetry so again x-axis we replace y with negative y if you you can draw the little graph notice how x was the same but y was uh, and negative y were both on the graph and then the y-axis we replace x with a negative x and for the origin you can guess we do both we replace x with negative x and y with negative y usually it's similar steps but the result is not always the same so we simplify if we get the original equation back then there is symmetry with respect to origin usually we check all three just for uh, completeness let's take a look at the example let's say if we have x squared plus y minus 9 equals to 0 so here is a graph how do we check if it's symmetric um, and we also want to find intercepts well first we find intercepts uh, recall x-intercept we set y equals to 0 so uh, it's you we get x squared minus 9 equals to 0 this one I did by factoring although you could also move 9 to the other side but you can factor it as difference of squares x minus 3 times x plus 3 equals to 0 so we get two x-intercepts in this case negative uh, 3 0 and 3 comma 0 in any order y intercept was set x equals to 0 I simply get y minus 9 equals to 0 so we get y equals 9 so 0 9 is on the graph so that's that's it for the intercepts how do we deal with symmetry well x-axis we replace y with negative y exactly as is notice how I have it in the equation x squared plus negative y instead of the y minus 9 equals to 0 so then we have um, notice this simplifies to x squared minus y minus 9 equals to 0 there is nothing else we can do but what we can do is compare it with the original equation and notice it does look different because the original equation was let's see if I can look that up the um, original equation was x squared plus y minus 9 equals to 0 it is not the same thing because the sign changed and typically if there is nothing you can do then uh, there is no symmetry so it's not symmetric with respect to x-axis and a lot of functions are not going to be as we're gonna see y-axis we do the same idea but notice there is a slight difference if there is an exponent like a square we put it in parentheses so it's negative x squared plus y minus 9 equals to 0 now think about how negative x can be simplified before we go to the next step well it would be negative x times negative x so notice how the negative will actually disappear and notice because of the even exponent now we have x squared plus y minus 9 equals to 0 notice how that does look like the original function so it actually this one is symmetric that's why I put a check mark earlier and so it is symmetric with respect to y-axis because we got the same now notice we do the same thing for the origin but we do both of them but I substituted negative x for the x squared and then the negative y but notice once we simplify the x squared is positive but the y actually remains negative so this one is not symmetric with respect to origin so there's only one symmetry with respect to y-axis notice um, so that's the all all the symmetry that we have now let's try to do the same thing with y equals to x cubed minus 27 again we find x intercepts and y intercepts first typically uh, y intercept is relatively easy we just get y equals negative 27 
The x-intercept is trickier. You will have to recall how to factor the cubes. And well, what I did, I made it a little bit simpler. I basically moved x cubed to the other side and then took the cube root, if you can remember from intermediate algebra. There are no positive and negative like with the squares. Uh, it's just whatever it is, it's 3. If we had negative 27, then we would get negative 3. Um, for example, with cubes. So there's only one that's 3 comma 0. And I'll show you how to factor cubes a little bit later. Now symmetry, x-axis, if you recall with the x-axis, um, let's jump a little too far, let's get back. We replace x um, with the um, negative x. Um, well, actually, no, we replace y with a negative y, pardon me. For the x-axis, we replace y with a negative y. So we're getting negative y here. How can we simplify it? Well, the best thing you can do is di multiply everything by negative or divide by negative. But notice all the signs flip. It's not the same thing as the original, so this one is not symmetric with respect to x-axis. y-axis, again, same idea. If there is an exponent, we put it in parentheses, but there's three negatives, negative x times negative x times negative x. Notice we still get a negative on the front. It's still not the same thing. Not symmetric with respect to y-axis. What about origin? We try both. We multiply it by negative. Notice uh, the, the negatives comes out. Um, all the signs flip. It's still not the original. Original was y equals x cubed minus 27. So it's not symmetric with respect to origin, so this one has no symmetry, which sometimes that happens. And that's it.